Hey, warming up, warming up, 10 out of 10, test that audio, is it good? Okay, it's good. Alright, 3, 2, 1. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the b and stream at twitch.tv slash the website that you're looking at. My name is b and you may know me from this channel at twitch.tv slash b or if you're on YouTube. I get a lot, a lot of views on YouTube. Greetings Mr. Blub, how are you doing? Uh, it is the 13th of June, 2022. Um, it's the solstice, not next week, but like a little bit into the next week. So uh, we're, getting, we're getting to the point where days are gradually getting warmer. I am missing uh, 20 stars each time in the last three weeks. I did 20 stars each time in the last six weeks. Uh, so how about let's just jump right into it. Jump into Super Mario Galaxy... Uh... Get that audio. There we go. Oh. Ah, alas. Alas, it did not pick up the audio. Desktop audio. Uh, gosh, did I... I didn't test this. Are we good? Okay, okay, okay. Now we're good. Okay, alright. <laughs> I was a little concerned. Uh, you missed those to do them again? Uh, I mean, granted, I am almost kind of doing them again. Uh, so in the last stream, uh, yeah, that was all 20 stars. That I had remaining after I had not, well, after I had beaten Bowser in stream 5. And, uh, yeah. Pretty much that was all, all the 20 left. So, this is the beginning of the Green Star Romp. Dear Mario, we've got lots of stars to, 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 to go through, I guess, yeah. Uh, it's addressed to Mario. But don't worry, Luigi, I'm sure it was just a typo. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she hand wrote that. What kind of typo is that? I love the term typo is used for non-typing related errors as well, so... Uh, but yeah, no, the beginning of the Green Star Trek. I already got one of them just to demonstrate last stream, and... Hopefully now, I'm gonna do a bit more than 20 stars. The aim is... maybe 30. Maybe. We'll see how I go. I don't know how many I can pace myself with, but... Since these stars are all just in the regular galaxies... Um... They're all levels that you've seen already, which means I don't have to go too slowly. I can kind of speed my way through. But, I don't remember at all where these green stars are off the top of my head, so... I'm gonna try my best to figure it out really quickly. Uh, the first green star was literally... there. So, there you go. Now, unfortunately, someone, someone will critique the... Oh, but like every time you get a green star, you X out of the level. It gets a little annoying. You could say maybe that's the mild inspiration for Super Mario Odyssey, where when you get a moon, the level just keeps going. I can hear the other one right there. There we go. I'm not sure if you remember or if it talked about, but I wasn't feeling too peachy four weeks ago. Oh my gosh, pneumonia. Jeez, bro. Jeez, bro. I think. I, do, I think I do remember, because we were talking about, um, uh, getting over illnesses and stuff. And, um, and, uh, I'm actually, like, let's, uh, let's discuss medical things, but, uh, I, I was gonna say, I'm getting an ultrasound on Wednesday for the thing that I, um, kind of feel like I haven't quite 100% gotten over. I feel like I'm comfortable enough to sit down and do a stream. Uh, sad every Monday you miss your stream. I mean, if you if you miss my stream, don't worry because I'll I'll always be here the next week. And also on top of that, I always like you know re-uploading those vods. So if you want to catch up, sure. And if you want to just like send random, can you send private messages in YouTube anymore? Oh, we passed a little two weeks saying we're to recuperate. Jeez, bro. Glad you're feeling better. First of all. And definitely like spend as much time as you want, like you know, resting up. Uh, yeah, they're all on my YouTube. So, youtube.com slash I have a vanity link. I'm amazed that YouTube still supports those, but sure. Um, yeah, I upload all the... Uh, not just the VODs, they're all actually straight recorded at the same time. So, they're slightly higher quality than the Twitch stream as well. But, uh, there's no extra content in them. Um, 
So star number two here is actually, uh, oh sorry, star number three is actually based off the second star. And I have jumped up here only to realize, yeah, the, the goal is over here. You gotta free the dude. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad the game's just taught me how to, how to spin. I missed that one out. Uh, but yeah, no, if you, if you did miss the stream and you wanted to, want to, you know, figure out what, what it was, yeah, just, they're all on the YouTube channel, uh, cause yeah, Twitch, that four day retention period is so, sorry, four day? I don't know why I thought that, two week. So the moment I stream, uh, not last week's stream, but the one before, um, unfortunately disappears from Twitch. Uh, it's not the same watching the stream as watching the stream. Do you want to catch up on the Super Mario Galaxy 2 side up or... Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's fair enough. But yeah, like, I, I try to stream every week, so if you do miss out, you can just chill the next week. And yeah, if you, if you do want to send a, um, a message, uh, just asynchronously. I don't know if I, like, I've ever, like, opened up my, uh, email inbox. Also, I'm hearing the green star. I'm not seeing the green star. That's interesting. Is it under the surface? Is it right here? Oh, it is right there. Okay. Alright, so we gotta get up there. Um, yeah, I wonder if I should, like, open up, like, an email or some other, like, writing service just to be like, oh, if you wanna, like, answer a question or just casually say some stuff, you know, feel free. Um, how about leaving comments on the YouTube videos? That's probably the most direct way. Because then you can, like, just timestamp bits that you really liked as well. I never know, I never know how to, like, really drive community engagement. I'm just kind of like, ah, eh, just do it. This is... Oops. <laughs> Down I go. This is not a crazy hidden star. It's just kind of there. Okay, sure. Uh, and that's three green stars. Well, to the stream, but that's all three green stars gotten in this galaxy, which means the galaxy is done. And it's hard done now. You know what that means? One, two, three. You get a gold crown. That's right, the silver crowns are not good enough. We gotta make them gold, so. There you go, Sky Station Galaxy, full done. Never seeing it again for the rest of the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So this past week, oh, did I get pinged on Discord? Can't believe it. Can't believe people are doing that. This time next week, sadly missed the Monday streams because of university. Ah, oh, darn. University is always a, always a bummer. But don't, don't feel like you, you have to, you know, do stuff. You can, you can easily, I, I reply to comments as well. Like, if you, if you want to leave comments on YouTube, so that's all good. Um, yeah, just watch the stuff in your own time. It's all good. And university is exciting. Is it like first year university or like just returning after uh, summer break or winter break if you're down, down here? I think university down here. Um, I went to a university that like started moving into trimesters. That narrows it down <laughs> very specifically. Um, but, uh, it's just like, it's, uh, oh, before pneumonia, oh, jeez, jeez, yeah, um, but, yeah, it's, it's fun syncing up the schedule, oh, I hear the green star, oh, it's up there, it's further up, good thing Luigi is a really high jumper. Large intestine troubles. Oh my gosh, jeez. Yeah, oh, I never know, like, and I think I mentioned this on, on one of the other streams, but, like, I never know whether it's easier to deal with a lower illness or an upper illness, if that makes sense. But, like, pneumonia is the lungs, uh, intestines lower, so... Man, you got the whole shibudu, so... Glad you're feeling better, but make sure you rest. It's all good. And then I'd, I'd something something I'd promote like a pseudoscience thing. Have some have some magic gems or something. I don't know. Something to make you feel better. A video game. A stream. There you go. Takes your mind off uh, off uh, sitting in the hospital. 
I've actually, I've never, I've never been in hospital beyond, I think I had like an overnighter once. And it's just like, oh boy, I like, I felt bad. And then I go to hospital and it's just like, oh geez, like there's all these other people who, uh, a lot of them were injuries. One of them I feel like might have been, um, like a smoking related disease, so whether it's, uh, cancerous or something else, I'm not too sure, but it's just like, man, you know, like, that kind of put me in perspective going, yeah, I mean, I was feeling real bad, but, yeah, like, I, I never want to come back to hospital. I mean, like, it's necessary, but it's when you need it, but it's just like, oh boy, like, you know, I'm glad it exists, and that's that. I'll keep, I'll keep my distance. Uh, but yeah. It's encouraging you to, to keep well. <laughs> I have I've flown with something in my mouth here. Uh, you'll see me picking up star bits and coins, but they're completely worthless now because there's no more Hungry Loomers. There's nothing to spend the star bits and coins on. Is the mystical green star on this planet, or is it all the way at the end? Because I haven't heard it just yet. Alright, we'll go the long way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, um... Uh, what's another one? It's like police. It's like, yeah, you probably don't want to, you know, have to be dealing with police, but... Uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah, cookie cook. Oh, dude! Okay, legit! Uh, someone, um on Reddit Game Deals linked a, um, like a browser-based idol game. I've never heard of it. It was, what was it, like, Synology? Not Synology, that's the name of the brand that makes my ass. Um, but it was just, like, uh, one where, um, like, it just goes crazy exponential. There's just, like, all these magical, like, numbers. Hold on, I'm legitimately gonna look it up. Uh, Synergism. That's a bit of a phallic name, but... Scientology? It's almost Scientology. <laughs> uh, but Synergism... Um, or is it Gizm? Uh, and it was just like... Oh. It's just like, oh, you get some tokens, and then you like spend the tokens to... Um, also, you see that green star up there. Oh boy. Um, like, you know, you, you spend it on upgrades to go faster, and everything just starts like scaling so exponentially, the entire thing, and then it's like, okay, then you prestige, or, yeah, you pre prestige, or transcend, or something, and then they've got, like, another system on top of it, so you prestige constantly, and then you transcend, which then resets everything before that, so it's like a second layer of it, um, and then there's another layer beyond that, and then you, like, get, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, and then you get another, like, one, it just keeps going, and it's surprisingly, like, I've only had it open for two days, and it's just, like, you keep unlocking, like, new, new mechanics. It's completely an idle game, there's nothing, like, fancy about it, and there's nothing really too active about it, but the fact that it's just, hey, it's a fairly nicely crafted idle game. I like it. So... That's all good. Cookie Clicker is always an old-school classic, and I am really glad that Cookie Clicker keeps, um... Keeps pushing itself a little bit, with the little minigames that it's gradually adding. Although, I don't know if they're ever adding the Dungeons feature back in. You know, in that one beta they had it? Oh, this is such a gutsy, a gutsy green star. I remember this one. What? Oh no, I'm too far in the background! No! Can't believe it. So yeah. But this week, I realized that one, uh, like all the E3 stuff, or oh, air quotes, E3 stuff was happening, but also, I decided to just spend the week watching back on the announcements that happened before the last stream. So before last week. Um, so I watched four of the conferences, um, 
I think I maybe mentioned the Warhammer one, uh, but I hadn't watched any of it yet. And uh, the first thing I'll say is, I've never played or really experienced anything Warhammer. So this one is a bit of a- that was the second star. That was the second star, what? Sorry, the third star. That means there was something in the middle. That's one thing I like about these green stars as well. You're free to get them in, like, if you pick green star 2, green star 3 is still there if it's still on the same- Oh, I saw it. I saw it. It's still there on the same, uh, you know, the same main star if it's- if you're along the lines. I guess since all three stars are- because this is the only star in the galaxy, but the main star. There's a Hungry Luma and then there's a, um, the Chimp Challenge, I think. That was the three stars in this galaxy, so... Oh. But you see, you see it's over there? Oh, I guess I need Yoshi. Yeah. But that's what I like about these green stars. They're nice and hidden. My first real experience with Warhammer was Total War Warhammer 2, and that game is amazing. Yeah, um... Like, I, I hear the, the Total War Warhammer is a really, really nice game. It's very intensive on your CPU. Wonderful to benchmark. Um... But yeah, like, I, uh, Warhammer is one where it's like, I, I hear there's a lot of, like, r real great, like, world building. Lots of isolated stories that allow them to tackle, you know, many different parts of... Oh boy, this is fairly risky. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I don't... Unfortunately for me, I don't know anything about this, the story, so when I'm looking at any of these any of these games, I kind of go, okay, well, what's the game itself? And I've actually got, um, a write-down of all my notes. All my fun little notes. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I wish I showed them, could show them on screen. Um, but I got, yeah, I wrote little notes, just time-stamping the individual parts of the, um, of the conferences, and just kind of going, like, what were my thoughts during those parts? Um, so yeah, I watched the Warhammer one, and then I watched the... Oh, I watched the PlayStation State of Play, that happened on June 2nd. Uh, and then the... Uh, the Sega... I, I, I'm kind of running off the E3 recap list, there might be more. In fact, there is more, because I missed the Indie Live Expo that happened a few weeks before this. Um, but the Sega special announcement, which ended up being the announcement of the Mega Drive 2 Mini. And then, uh, the last one was the, uh, Limited Run Games Showcase. I like the little screen effects here, the little dust. It's good fun. It doesn't sound like there's a green star on this planet, though. Which is gonna be kind of annoying when I do all the other stars. Um... So I thought, why don't I just briefly go over some of the things. Uh, so the first game they showed off was, uh... Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. I think I wrote down it was pre-rendered and I don't know anything. <laughs> I, that was that was one. Uh, Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. It's a MOBA, maybe. It's or it might just be Alien Swarm like style, top-down four-player co-op. Um, I saw that green star. Where was it? It was on the other side. Oh boy, that's a that's a side. How about let's get rid of this, because I need a... Oops. Because I don't think I can jump it while I'm holding this. Oh, maybe you can jump it. Alright, run and jump. Run and jump, Luigi. Nah. Uh, Alien Swarm's great. Yeah, Alien Swarm's pretty great. I, uh, sometimes I feel like I write my notes and I sound critical. Like, r really critical of the games. It's mostly, like... Caution. Cautiously optimistic is the term I gotta make, he says. Or it's just like a, a reactor drop official. Oh, is that, um, oh, a Alien Swarm reactor drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I wish I had played Alien Swarm a lot with, with friends. I think I played it like two player ones. And then I just kind of experienced some of it with the, the AI. And I feel like you don't get the magic if you're not playing it with friends. Um... Uh, the Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, I think it's already out because they spoke about a new update, but the trailer made it seem like it was coming out, so I was like, okay. Um, uh, this was, yeah, Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. Yeah, uh, 
I, all of these games, I have no idea if they're out, except for Total War Warhammer 3. That's the only one I know that that's already out. Um, Green Star 2, wow. <laughs> Same trail. You can't even skip it, because it's technically a different star. I wonder as Luigi if he can do like a massive like leap here. I feel like he can. It might be triple jump worthy. Nah. Oh. 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 My goodness. Oh. I'm gone. I, I've put myself in orbit. I've put myself in orbit. Hell. Oh. Mouse up. <laughs> Woo. Uh, weird controls is never, never fun. Nah. Uh, so, uh, then there was Warhammer Plus, that looks like, uh, Disney Plus, maybe? You... I don't know if it's a subscription service or just a website with special exclusive features. Not too sure. Uh, I didn't check it out. Uh, Super Kerbal Galaxy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was a Kerbal Space program, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, there was... They showed off World of Tanks. Like, that's a game that already exists. And they're just doing a new battle pass season with a Warhammer style tank in there. That was an interesting plug. And then Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. I guess it's uh, a new um, faction slash expansion. I think they're here in a green star. Sounds like it's over here. Oh! There you go. You get, this is what I mean by, like, it gets cheeky. It gets real cheeky. That was, like, tip of the hat. If you're not Luigi as well, some of these become so brutally hard. So. Uh. Let's see what they say after that. Oh, yeah. The, the only thing with the Immortal Empires trailer, it was a nice looking CG trailer, but not too sure what the gameplay is. Um. And that's going to be a bit of a reoccurring trend with a lot of these, where it's like when they show off trailer, and not necessarily gameplay. And I don't mind showing off trailer, but sometimes I feel like I need a little bit of both. I need a little bit of guidance as to what makes your gameplay different, and then don't... You can you can do the flashy stuff. Uh, Mortal Empires... Wait, it's the Total War game... Wait. Oh, is that the subtitle for Total War Warhammer 3? Is it not already out? Maybe that's why. I'm scratching my head going like, what's, the, what's going on? Um... I should have really looked up some of the stuff. Um, uh, then they plugged the PC Game Pass, uh, which is a name that's not going to catch on as much because it sounds so generic and people don't connect that it's Xbox, but it is. Um, I got the Cosmic Clones kicking in. I forgot what was... Oh, you just leave here. There we go. Off we go. Do it. Okay, I could have legit. I want to combine some maps of Warhammer Total War 1, 2, and 3. Oh! Oh, okay. Not the full map. I right, hear in that green star. Because you can't see it, so. Oh boy. I should have probably lost. I should probably lost the drill. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Wait, so- Oh, okay. So they're all, like, gradually becoming larger games as well. Oh, there we go. At least you can do it with well you got the drill. Oh, that's three galaxies down. In 23 mi minutes. I actually might be getting more than 30 stars in the stream. I don't know if 40 is going to be possible. We'll see. Ultimately, I want to get it done in a nice round number. For oh, 40 might be a push. I'm thinking 40 might be a push, but also, like, uh... Because, uh, for the people who know, the very, very end, I want to give myself a little bit more time. Um, so fair enough. Now, the galaxies with only two stars, only two green stars. Don't have to worry about getting too many stars on these ones. Uh, you can do 40? I can do 40? I'll do 40. I got some shorter ones here. Like, like this galaxy is going to be really easy to see the green stars as you're going along. So, I'm not as concerned. Um, 
I do remember a few that I just, you know, I struggled to find. I had to look, you know, wiki them up, um, way back when. It's kind of weird seeing your star counter keep going beyond 120 as well. Oh! <laughs> oh, no. Again, with the green background, I don't know what's up with it. But okay. Um... <laughs> that was a, that was a absolute, you know, defender moment right there. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? W Warhammer community. Oh, yeah, this, this is mean one number two. Uh, because obviously if you spin, you flip the platform, so you gotta make sure you got that one right. It's not too bad. Uh, what else? Warhammer 40k, Shooters, Blood and Teeth. This one's a new game. It's a... 2D, four-player side-scroller, weapony style game. Uh, reminds me of a Flash aesthetic. Kind of that, you know, the very rotate-heavy, uh, kind of, I guess, how do I add, uh, like sprite-based skeletons, effectively. You know what I mean? Um, you shoot a lot of stuff that lo looks like a lot of weapons. Uh, not really too sure much about the game, but, yeah, it looks alright. Uh, Warhammer Vermintide 2 Chaos Waste Bileco. That's a free update that's literally coming out tomorrow, apparently. So, And that's kind of weird, because Vermintide 2 is a bit old, isn't it? It's at least, like, a couple of years, so... And I remember, I think, last year they announced, like, a new class, just as a DLC. I'm like, oh, jeez, okay. So... Uh... What else I got? Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. This one is the big title. It's by Saber, who is founded... Or founded? Was it founded by... Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters released 5th of May. Oh, I guess it just came out. Okay. Alright. Um. Uh, Saber is, uh, headed by Tim Willits, who was famously of id fame and claimed that he invented Deathmatch, and everyone else at id was like, heck no, you didn't invent it. Turn based and nothing like anyone's like, oh, it's turn based! Oh, what a shame. What a shame. I mean, I. I sometimes, like, understand these games, you know, as in, especially in Warhammer, trying to incorporate elements of the turn-based game that it's, you know, based on, but it's also just like, I don't know, some of these games are not turn-based in the slightest. I think Space Marine is probably one, isn't it? It's a third-person shooter. Okay, I'm hearing it. It sounds closer down here. Oh, there it is. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, don't have much to say about Space Marine 2 because they showed off the trailer at the Game Awards last year, and then they just talked over a trailer with a little bit of gameplay, but so little that you can't really tell what it is. So, all right. Uh, they advertise Razor Mice. With Warhammer on it. Okay. Uh, Warhammer 40k Warp Forge the card game. Uh, it's Hearthstone? That's what I... I... Okay, I've played a handful of these collectible card games, like the digital kinds. And I'm now gonna call every single one of them Hearthstone. Like, the very simple ones. Even though... There's probably... <laughs> there's probably a better term for the simplified ones. But uh, just, just think Hearthstone. That's what I got out of the trailer. Um, I love... I love the, um... Uh... Like, the, the way to do a card game trailer, which is you, you have some exposition, mostly still frames in your trailer, and then like, wow, it's a card. Like, a card shows up. They never animate anything particularly <laughs> going on with the card game. It's just like, oh, no, it's a card. Card, so, sure. Uh, Blood Bowl 3. This one is neat, because one, they dubbed over a French guy, but, you know, hey, it's a developer talking about the game, sure. And, uh, oh, and hopefully it's French. <laughs> That'd be very embarrassing if I got that one. Oh, look at that, I finally got this. It's just a bunch of star bits, but it's nice to get that jump. I uh, saw the green star above the checkpoint. Um, well, that's good to know that it's over there. I'll listen out for it, but... It should be, yeah, it should be down there. Worst case as well, you pick it up and you figure out whether it's one or two. Because at the very least, they're all in order. So if you pick up one, you know that... You know, green stars later are after it, and green stars before are before it. So, 
But the Gravestar Hunt's kind of interesting. Just because it's like, oh, it's it's all these levels again. It is a bit of padding, I guess, because literally all the effort is we stuck a star right here in the level. But... Well, that was the checkpoint. Maybe there's another checkpoint. I have not heard it yet, though, so I'm a little, a little worried. Uh, but yeah, Blood Bowl 3. So... They talked about the mechanics of this one, and in some of the other ones, I look at the trailer and I go, oh, I don't really know what it's about, but in this one, it's like, okay, so it's a turn-based, um, it's either, like, defeat the enemy, like, team, or it's a little bit of a turn-based sports kind of game, if that makes sense. I, I'm not too sure exactly, uh, but one thing I really liked was, and I guess it's Blood Bowl 3, so I should probably know by now, um... Well, no, that's that's the comet. That's the comet. Man, I have not found that star yet. Oh, the one came out before. Yeah, it's. Oh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I was like, I know he's gonna just move up. Um, yeah, it's a it's a pretty old one. You you would have you would have probably seen like a, a picture on Steam or something of it. Um, but, uh, but I really liked how he went over, you know, here's a couple of the new, uh, enemy types, uh, or, or rather, like, team types. One had, like, a big tree guy, one was, like, made up of various villain factions, that was kind of neat. And then he showed off, like, some of the fields. One was, uh, and I, I wrote this one down, which was, uh, uh, it's on, like, a ship deck of some kind, or, or a dock of some kind, and, uh, there's water down below, and, uh, throughout the the match, water starts, you know, or is it, there's a tentacle monster, and the tentacle monster starts, like, you know, harassing people and shoving water over the place, and I'm like, that's really cool, you know, that's a mechanical thing that I can connect with, and go, ah, that provides some, some kind of interest. It's like, um, when they showed off, uh, like, a uh, a lot of, like, early Wii U titles, it's like, conceptually, it makes sense, I look at it and I go, that makes, yeah, that's great, so... I think it's also because it's not relying on knowing the world in order to, you know, sell the trailer. It's like, this is a game. Okay, I'm still hearing it in my right ear. I'm still hearing it in my right ear. Is this what you mean by above the checkpoint? Man, that was a... Yeah, there it is. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can't move down from here, by the way, so that's, a, that's an interesting. Uh, next game, Warhammer Age of Sigma Tempest Fall. Um, is this already out? I, oh no, it's a VR game. It's a, uh, oh boy, I, I'm really judgmental of VR titles. Oh, there we go. I'm really a bit judgmental of VR titles just because I feel like a lot of them are this setting with, yeah, like you're slashing at people in VR. They don't really show off the unique kind of weapons or other kinds of things. Tokyo Game Show, hoping for EDF 6 news. Oh yeah, when's Tokyo Game Show? That's later in the year, isn't it? Is it like August, I think? I gotta look that one up, but yeah, no, Tokyo Game Show is great. That was only star number one as well. Jeez, fair to Oh, September? September. Um... Next up, there's so many games. This was one of the longer August's games from. Ah, okay. Hi. Yeah, this was one of the longer presentations. It was, uh, yeah, nearly like 48 minutes. Which is crazy. It actually was the longest one out of the. Well, the Sega one was a little longer, but it was also skippable, so. Uh. Alright, I'm gonna speed through the rest of these. Warhammer 40k Battle Sector. There's a new playable faction in an update. Sure. They, they showed off a roadmap, and I, I guess there's a degree of, like, you know, games with post-launch updates. Um, some games with post-launch updates, they will talk about in these presentations, and I'm just like, bro, that, like, you could have released the game with that. You didn't need to, like, show it in your presentation. Um, this one, it looks okay. Uh, Gothic Amada 3. Um, did I actually write about Gothic Amada 3? 
No. If that's a Warhammer game, then no, I, that did not come up. And if it's not a Warhammer game, uh, I might have not seen it yet, just because I'm going a bit slowly. I'm only up to, like, announcements from June 3rd. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Warhammer 40k Inquisitor. This is a remake of a Diablo-style hotbar game. Um, that's all I can say, really. Stuff one of the two is a game, three is not announced. Oh, okay. I, I saw no mention of Gothic Armada full stop, so... Um, let's see, Warhammer... Oh, so there's a good old game's goodie pack. I'm late on the punch on that one. That's <laughs> already probably gone. Um, let's see, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. This is a boomer shooter. I looked at it and I was like, that looks neat. And surprisingly, it was sprite based on the weapons and enemies. Uh, but it also said at the end it was running on the Unreal Engine. And I was like, eh, what are they going for there? Um, so, I'm a sucker for boomer shooters, so... I'll give it a... Well, actually, I say I'm a sucker for boomer shooters, but I've never played really any, like, modern boomer shooter. I only played the actual boomer shooters. So who knows. Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Um, they barely showed any gameplay, but I'm gonna say it's a CRPG slash a tactics RPG. I don't know though, they barely showed any of it. Um, or Steam discounts, uh, and then that's it. Uh, and then they showed off some mobile games. Warhammer 40k Tactics, uh, which is uh, like, I'm just gonna say it's like Fire Emblem Heroes. It looks like a simplified version of the strategy, or a strategy game of some kind, but uh, it doesn't look like it's compromising a ton, so sure. Warhammer Chaos and Conquest. Um, this is a uh, Clash of Clans. Like, you know, build a tower, bars over the screen, telling you that you gotta wait like 17 years uh, for something to happen. Um, I love the trailers. Uh, oh. I think there's a possible way to get on top from here, but I should probably just keep going right and then get on top there. Is it actually here? Yeah, it is there. Yeah, there we go. The big goodie bag. And then you got, and then you gotta go ultra high. Oh, there we go. Up, up. There we go. Good stuff. Um, also, that that trailer for Chaos and Conquest. I love like um, the uh, the way that the trailer is structured because it is like just absolutely by the books mobile game presentation. It's like. Um, or, 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 actually, a handful of these. One of them was, um, like, uh, people, live-action people, on their phone, in various places, looking at their phones, they do the fist pump, going, yeah, I did a, I did a phone thing. Um, and then, like, they, they all, like, meet each other in person. Um, like, all the people who showed up in the trailer doing stuff in the game together, they're like, ah, oh, we're in person doing the game, wow. Um, Chaos and Conquest, uh, they were like, yeah, I tapped a thing, and then, oh no, um, they used kind of CG people, uh, which was a bit weird. Uh, I love the bit where, like, one of them wakes up, like, there's a picture of a phone, and the, and then the phone screen lights up, and it's like, oh, wow. Um, uh, one, one thing as well is that they had a, a chat box visible in-game, uh, during that whole trailer, and they surprisingly never faltered. It was pretty accurate the entire time. They had people providing good, like, amounts of dummy text to show in their trailer. Um, they kept talking about unions, though, and I don't know if that's the game's equivalent of guilds or whether the people making the trailer really wanted to be paid more. Um, but I, I'm gonna say they, they knew what they were, they were doing. Look how high up this star is, man. Jeez, like, you can see it when you're coming in, but... Oh boy, that's uh, pretty high, so, sure. Uh, the Horus Heresy Legion's new expansion, Titan Death. Uh, it was another, it was the exact same idea of a pre-rendered lore trailer, and then they showed cards, and I now have no idea what the difference between this game and the other card game is. Um, Warhammer Quest Silver Tower, the video game, Season 2. There's another grid-based tactics game. I don't know. Warhammer 40k Lost Crusade. Uh, this is a, a gacha style game. I love as well, I keep saying I love, but like, like uh, there's dummy 
footage where they've uh, put, um, you know, they've debugged themselves to have 49,999,900 of the orange gem thing, and they've got 9,999 of every item, um, while they, they still have, like, welcome aboard prompts on screen, so they've not done that. Um, they had, uh, like, a PvP sh shot where they had, and I'm not even kidding, they had Askajududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududududud
fancy remaster treatment. I really like, um, uh, I've not actually played any Resident Evils, but I really like the, um, just the look. Like, they seem to manage the facial, the human animation, um, look and, and motion really nicely in these Resident Evil games since 7. They just look, like, um, at least really good in, in trailers. Um, I feel like Resident Evil 2 is like that. Yeah, um, 4 is going to be a little interesting because, like, Resident Evil 2 and 3 were, oh, were top-down fixed perspective games, so, you know, turning them into the over-the-shoulder combat games is, um, well, they're always combat games, but turning them to the over-the-shoulder stuff seemed like a natural way to modernize them. 4's already kind of got that, so I'm curious what they're going to do. Um, but they seem to have done a decent job already. And they don't get rid of the old versions. Like, I assume you can still play the old version of 4, because... Oh my gosh, I... Uh, got a little gutsy there. Um, oh, I remember the green star in this one being an absolute, like, nightmare to get. Oh, oh, I'm down. This texture doesn't look particularly amazing, does it? Um... But yeah, no, it looks alright. Uh, the plug for the PlayStation VR stuff came at the end. Um, I don't know anything about Resident Evil 4, unfortunately, other than the Shady Jacket guy who sells the stuff. There's that. And, uh, I know about 5, because I've watched someone play through 5. Um, but, my knowledge of the other ones, I should, I should really get into other... You know, I, 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 I really shy away from survival horror, because I feel like I would actually get spooked. Um, but I'm, I, I, I don't know, like, when I play other survival horrors, like, I've played a few, and I've never felt, like, too spooked. I feel like sometimes I get a bit frustrated. Oh, there it, okay, so there it is. You just go for it. This is real gutsy. No, no. Dang it. That's a real gutsy place for it. There's probably a better way to get it. Too bad I'm gonna ignore the better ways. You could probably just see it behind the... Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the end and then we'll all do the jump, because you could probably see it from the end there. I love how I, I said, oh, there's probably a really gutsy, like, star there, and that was not the one I was thinking of. <laughs> but it's still gutsy. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's just straight there, but... Oh, is that just, that's just a long jump. They timed it perfectly for specifically Luigi, so, yeah. Uh, the next thing they said, Resident Evil 8 VR. It just showed, uh, Lady Dimitrescu, Vampire Lady, tall, 8-foot Vampire Lady, um, and went, yeah, and you can do this in VR, which, uh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> oh boy, so, someone really wanted that, and now it's happened, so, you know, go nuts. Um, oh, that was the second one? Ooh, that was the first one. That was the first one. All right, um, doesn't look like there's any extra content, it's just a VR either update or possibly its own thing, who knows. Uh, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Retribution Chapter 2, what a name. Uh, the one on the castle tower in the background when you picked up. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember the castle tower. Yeah. So, Green Star 1, yet again. And you'd have to jump up to the castle tower via... Um... By the thwomp, I guess. Get out of here, Goom. Oh. Is this fire the thwomp? I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah, fire the thwomp. This is, and there it is, right there in the corner. What a weird one. I guess the one up kind of gives it away. Because the one up gives you the, the sense that you can come up here. You have to really, like, have an eye out for that. It's a real cheeky spot, yeah. Um, so the, the Walking Dead, long title, really long title. Um, the zombies don't look very good. It looks very flat and undetailed. I feel like there's an art style they're going for, but it didn't carry over very well into the, uh, into the trailer form, so. By the way, that's the whole world done. I'm 49 minutes into the stream, and that's the whole world, so... I'll aim for 40. We'll go for 40. Because it's a little under 
was that 18 or 17 well, that's that's the whole world so to the next world it's kind of nice like going through these levels just turbo again but I, I'm kind of glad it is probably gonna be three streams we'll, we'll do it. maybe if I can chuck in a couple more extra maybe I should do like maybe I should do 45 if I can fit it usually I do a two hour stream so Green Star, what? Oh, I wonder where it is. <laughs> I wonder where the Green Star is. Um, two more VR games. Uh, no Man's Sky, PS5, uh, more VR. Um, the pop... Okay, watch the trailer. You'll notice some real horrendous pop... Uh, I guess it's pop out because it disappears before it reaches the edge of the screen. Um, but, oh boy, it's like you can see it. It's so horrendously that... There, this one is a... Ah... Uh, Yeah, nah. Nah. Reset it. Reset it, bro. Still one, one star each three minutes pace? Yeah. Well, not not this right if I keep doing that. Maybe you just go for a gutsy long jump. Nope, not yet. This one, yeah. It's a little bit of room. But he got us. Oh. This is... Oh, there we go, there we go. Alright. Alright, it's not too bad, you're just gonna really not hit the block. I'd be more upset if it wasn't the very first thing in the in the world. That wasn't even Green Star 1! That was, well, that, that was Green Star 1, but like, that wasn't the one I was commenting earlier. Um, other than that, No Man's Sky is No Man's Sky. Uh, the performance looks so shoddy though. Which, I guess, is it, wasn't that like No Man's Sky Day 1? Or did No Man's Sky run fine and it was just people being disappointed by what it was? So, I, I'm amazed that No Man's Sky continues to grow as a game. Like, it keeps adding more stuff. Yeah, I, I'll i get on the topic because uh, I, I have seen the Starfield 15 minute um, Todd Howard speaking to you, telling you wonderful, wonderful things. Um, later on, but I, I really like the idea of a game, um, you know, just existing. I guess No Man's Sky is one where it's like, the, what people wanted it to be, it's gradually grown to be that without actually charging anything extra. Um, I'm not saying that the game, you know, deserves any more merit than a game that comes out first right away. Another green set, did I miss another one? I'm gonna go for the, the one I did see. I, I don't believe they put any green size like towards the alternative route that they had. Far in the back. Oh, far in the background. Okay. Like that one? That is the one that I'm getting. Right there, that one. I, I said that one and then like I just kind of waved my cursor over it expecting you to see it. Was that the one I was pointing at? Maybe that was another one. We'll go for this one because this one is clearly there. Uh... Oh, I've just got to nail a triple jump, don't I? At least it's not destroying the platform. This is worse than a triple jump. This is a backflip off the circle. It's a backflip off the circle. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. Alright, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean, yeah. Uh... Last VR game, Horizon VR. Um, this is a uh, Horizon VR Call of the Mountain. It's a, I, I think it's a new VR focused title in the Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon New uh, Forbidden West franchise. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn most notably is one of the earlier games that they brought to PC, I think after God of War. Uh, and angered a lot of PlayStation fans. Um, it's a VR title, uh, there's a lot of climbing, a bit of bow work. Um, there was something kind of weird earlier on where they started off um, with the character in a boat being taken by someone and their hands were bound. They looked down, they tugged at their hands, um, but 
Uh, they're doing the Rayman, like, floating hands thing for the VR model. And it was kind of weird, because it's like, your hands are bound, but also, like, you have Rayman hands. Your hands are floating out in space. I, I immediately got taken out looking at that, going, huh. And, and the worst part is that it will make a lot of sense for the rest of the gameplay, but, like, looking at just that one bit... I feel like I can just jump for this. Yeah. That's a... That's a bit shocking. Uh, I guess Mario can't do that, can he? Whoa. Let's not, let's not accidentally pick that up. Um, yeah. Other than that, none of the VR titles really look like anything you haven't seen in VR. Um, like, No Man's Sky VR is just like... Well, I guess any game that's in first person, it's like, eh, you can make it work in VR. Um, which is pretty much all of them except for Resident Evil 4. So, this is gonna be a gutsy one. Because I believe you have to wait for this platform to drop, and then go grab it before it completely disappears, so... Uh, and they said the Spider-Man PC announcement. This one was kind of weird because it's like, it's a trailer of things from the original Spider-Man game. So, the people who know what the Spider-Man game looks like will look at that and immediately go, huh, what? And then they say, oh, coming to PC. Although they did say beforehand, a fan, a PlayStation fan favorite is coming to PC. So if you miss that, then, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, no, Spider-Man's coming to PC. Uh, as a PC owner and not a PS5 owner, I'm happy. I actually, I don't mind for games coming to other platforms, like... Really, sh you know, I don't, I don't see there being any huge reason why a game should be exclusive to one platform, but also please release your games on other platforms as well. I'd like to see, you know, games that are on PC come to consoles. So I don't see why, why not of console games coming to PC. Some people get very defensive about it. I'm just like, eh. Uh, there's a game called Stray. You're a cat. There's robots that are afraid of you. The cat walks around, kind of snaps to some walkways. So I'm curious how much snapping actually will happen, but, uh, it looks alright, it looks kind of interesting. Um, bit artsy, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, they announced it's coming to PlayStation Plus. Remember the announcement trailer for the new Battlefront? Star Wars Battlefront, they got a new one? Oh, I'm hearing the, the star and... Woo, boy! I think I botched it up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Clear, clear my power up. Down I go. Everyone expected it to be a new battlefield and then a uh, snow glider flew by years ago. Oh. Like, were they still announcing Star Wars Battlefront 2? 2? Like the 2017 2 or the other one? Oh, this is cheeky, isn't it? Am I going up? I'm going up slightly. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> And you gotta be very careful you land on that ledge. There you go. The 2015 one. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't remember where was I when I first watched the 2015 one. I spoke about EA's 2017 E3 trail uh, conference um, on my channel. That was one where I was like, Nah, this is this is too much. Too much. But uh, I don't remember the 2015 one. I remember EA having some real shocking e e uh, E3s. Um. Also, hadn't they, did they announce um, Battlefield 1 at that point, or no, they, they laid, they stopped for a moment to give Star Wars Battlefront. And we weren't expecting Star Wars Battlefront, we were expecting, um, EA having the Star Wars license and that's it. So, kicking in with a Battlefront title that, uh, inevitably kind of disappointed people. Uh... Oh, I'd been disappointed by EA ages ago. Because, <laughs> but, I believe, yeah, 2014 was The Sims 4. And also SimCity 2013. I, I had been very, very damaged by EA. And also, whatever the heck they did to Need for Speed. And also, I guess, bailing from Steam, that was kind of a, a sign for me. There were quite a number of... of Things that just like, you know, rub in the wrong way with EA's uh, announcements. Okay, listen out if you hear a green star. Oh, I, I saw the glow. The glow is too bright. Oh boy, why do they keep doing this? They keep putting it behind walls. Um, 
Yeah. What's a real weird uh, thing about Star Wars Battlefront is that the second game was alright, from what I hear. Like, it's just like, oh, it's the first game, but, uh... Oh, it does have the sense of pride and accomplishment. It did have that. They fixed that, though, didn't they? They fixed that pretty quick. Uh, but yeah. Uh, next game in the list, the Callisto Protocol. This, uh... Oh, I noted the trailer had at the bottom, camera angles adjust... That was the third side, what? It said, camera angles adjusted for the trailer. And I'm thinking, like, do you have to tell people that? Like, there's a lot of things that are subject to change anyways. I don't think it matters too much, but sure. Uh, in terms of shooters, we've had Balfour Back Company 2 and then Balfour 3, so the hype was real. Oh boy, okay, Balfour 3 let me down, so... Uh, I'm out, I'm out there. Also, Balfour 4 was very shocking on launch. Wasn't it, but... I guess, I guess the other thing is that, like, I'll, I'll say, like, oh, I'm, I'm very judgmental of these trailers, but I also feel like sometimes some people, like, don't get burnt out by... Well, rather, they don't find the bad thing of what I experienced, so even though I might say I got burnt out at X point in time, some people might be like, oh, like, I found it was alright for a while longer, and some people might say they were burnt out way earlier, like, some people will go, oh, no, Dragon Age Origins was the, the one for me. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's in between. What, what a spot right there. At the very least, I don't have to play more of this level. <laughs> and I just don't like the boulder mushroom. I just... Uh, I could do without it. It's... The boulder mushroom is my spring mushroom of this game, except the spring mushroom also appears in this game. How many levels did the boulder mushroom even appear in? It was like two, wasn't it? 144, just like the refresh rate on my monitor, except it's really 143 point... Actually, it is 144.003. It's a little bit higher than the... than the 144. You know, I got a 60Hz monitor, that's 59.7 like, five. It's a little bit under. Who knows? Amazingly, there are- I can't even believe there's three stars in, in this galaxy, and now you're gonna chuck another three more into Battle for Middle Earth. Uh, one and two are amazing. If they had the Lord of the Rings license again. I hear those games are pretty neat. Who's got the Warner Brothers for just self-publishing? I- I don't think Warner Brothers has done a bad job with their, their uh, Lord of the Rings license. They've done alright. Mostly because Monolith, like with those Shadow of Mordor, Mordor games, like that's a, you know, that's a wonderful developer studio to have. And uh, I keep plugging Lord of the Rings Online, which I don't believe, I believe it's just licensed by Warner Brothers, it's not even published by them anymore. So, the people who maintain that, like, you know, they do wonderful stuff. Saw the thing, by the way. Gotta go right up to the top. Where the penguin is. Ah, oh, down I go. Uh, but yeah, the Callisto Protocol. It's a spooky horror game uh, with killer robots. Uh, do I have killer robots? Yeah, spacesuit out outdoors. Um, I wish I had picked this up earlier. Done. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of gore in it. Like, I, I know it's like, oh, sometimes you want to trailer for, for shocking purposes, but it's like, there is a lot of person gets killed by monster in the trailer that I can't take it too seriously. It feels, it feels almost like, I was thinking, oh, they're going for like the dead space kind of spooky vibe, but I'm like, no, oh, like, they're going a bit too far. I don't know if it's that scary. Um, might be okay, but who knows. Uh, Rollodrome, it's a cell shaded uh, art style with hard black uh, comic y edges on any kind of floors and walls. Uh, inside these skate park arenas, there are people with roller skates and uh, machine pistols, Uzis, uh, shotgun, uh, you destroy robots and other dudes in the fighting arenas while on roller skates. It looks okay, I don't know how it will control. Uh, Eternites. It's a JRPG because I, they started off with uh, black screen, they wrote white text uh, gradually across the screen, read it out loud, and you immediately it was a JRPG. Um, a guy gets his arm cut off at the beginning and then he has like a phantom sword that comes out, and then a bunch of school people uh, are his party members, and um... He fights monsters in a kind of real-time scenario, and then he goes home, and it's a dating sim. 
like visual novel dating sim game. It even does the still frame animal anime picture, not animal picture. Oh. Um, so I looked at that and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, they then showed off Street Fighter 6. I am one of one people on Earth who thinks Street Fighter 6 looks very much like Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5. Like, the art style doesn't look too weird. Um, because they've been doing, like, the, you know, the character punches and, uh, what a genre hodgepodge. Um, oh yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I sound, like, a bit dismissive, but, like, you know, Doing dating sim, or really doing like any genre mixed with any other genre, like, take some guts and eh, sometimes it sets you aside if you're one of the only ones to do it. Um, it's like a honey pop. I I'll always know as being a surprisingly good game uh, in the dating sim uh, puzzle genre, I guess. I'm not hearing a. Is that the green? No, that's just Luigi's thing. Uh, x morph Defense. Is that, um, Rift Breaker? It was, uh, x morph Defense makes me think, uh, x -Con. I don't know if, it's, if that is x -Con. I've tried playing the original UFO Defense x -Con and I have immediately gone, wow, I need to now uh, read a manual and basically find someone who knows how to play this game better than I can. Uh, oh, that, that is the scariest star right there. Am I too far over? Yep. <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. Nothing to do with Axon? Ah, oh, okay. First time I've heard of it now. Uh... Yeah, no, Street Fighter 6, like... Yeah, the art style just kind of looks like Street Fighter to me. It doesn't look too weird. Um... Kind of weirdly, at the end of the trailer, they showed a character standing in a room that looks like a... Like a waiting lobby room. And I'm like, why did they show that off? They didn't show any mechanics with that. It just kind of just some flashy... You know, uh, this is street fighting. Yeah. Oh, oh. Alright, I'm a, oh boy, now I gotta do it from this angle. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> the background! Ah! <laughs> oh no! I wish I could do it head on. That would have been easier head on. I'm gonna lose all my lives doing these green stars, I'll tell you that. Which is not really going to be much of a pain, because it's just, you know, it doesn't take too much time to get back to these stars, but... Maybe it would be easier with Yoshi, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, no, bad, 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 no. So, was that? Uh, they showed off Tunic. This game's already on PC, and I know it's on the Xbox Game Pass. Um, but it's a cutesy style game, and I don't know too much about it, but I know people really like it. Uh, there's another game called Season, A Letter to the Future Autumn. No, I wrote down Autumn as in it's coming out in Autumn. Not, that's not in the title. <laughs> um, uh, I looked and I go, this is a game you expect from an artsy indie studio from California, or some other... Um, you know, like, out of, out of DigiPen, that kind of style. Well, actually, I don't know if it's out of DigiPen, but, like, I don't know, it looks... Uh, reminds me of, um, you remember that one trailer for In the Valley of Kings? Kind of reminds me of that. That game's never coming out, is it? It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. And then they got bought by Valve. And it's just gone, so... Uh, but yeah, no, you play as a short-haired black woman. I wrote that down, wow. African-American, we'll go with that. Better, better be a bit safer on that one. Um, you ride on a bike through cel-shaded countrysides. It's got cows. Wow. And you take photos. And and people are like, I must talk to you about things. So I assume it's a lot of a story kind of game. Um, not too sure if there's any, like, you know, cha challenge sounds like a, a, you know, very dismissive word. But you know what I mean? Like... Whether it's just a game you experience and you eventually beat, or whether it's something where it's like, oh, you gotta do this and this thing is in your way, or something like that. Um, that was Green Star 2 as well, so I gotta keep going. Um, for sure. Uh, last one they showed off, Final Fantasy 16. I don't know much about this other than it's more Final Fantasy in the same style that they've been doing. The kind of real-time combat where you do combos, real juggly combos going on this time. Um, similar to Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy XV. Um, and, uh, 
That's about it. That's all I know. I don't know much about Final Fantasy. I know they mentioned Bahamut and um, that was it. Ifrit. And I'm like, oh, these are like the big god like creatures. Are all the characters um, inspired by these god creatures? Like, is that what they're going for? I don't know. I don't know anything about this game. All I know is it's coming out next year. So we can wait. Uh, and then they just end there. They go, that's it. That was 27 minutes, and, uh... Yeah, I, I've i played Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, and i played 7 on my channel blind, which was a kind of interesting one. Um, it works out okay. Uh, I haven't played any of the others. Um, honestly, like, the games are kind of different enough that I have no idea anything about this game after playing any other game, so who knows. I mean, they go from turn-based to real-time to pseudo-real-time, as they do in Final Fantasy IV? IV has a pseudo-real-time system. Alright, Lisa keeps yelling at me because I don't make an action quick enough. It's kind of annoying. Uh, well, yes, I did just see that. Oh, okay. Oh, let's, let's do it. Hover, and backflip, and Yoshi is gone! Oh, he landed. He landed down here, didn't he? Come on, Yoshi. Oh, I should have waited. I should have waited. That's okay. Uh, but you know, the PlayStation conference was mostly, um, a little bit weird. Like, the two big titles, Street Fighter 6 and Final Fantasy 16, sure, okay. Um, although, you can guarantee, well, they're gonna come to PC or maybe any other console later on. Um, and given that Spider-Man is now coming to PC, it's like, yep, yeah, what, what else has Sony got lingering? Who knows? Uh, the VR stuff looks okay, although it's VR. I don't really know if it's going to sell me. I don't know how expensive the headset is as well. Um, <laughs> so happy. Alright. Sometimes he does the hover and sometimes he doesn't. There we go. All good. So there's that. Uh, next up on my list, I watched the Sega special event where they talked about the Mega Drive Mini. I will uh, Mini Two, sorry, because I've already released one. It's coming out in Japan, October 27th, for 99.80 yen. Um, they advertise it's got over 50 titles, and the big thing that they've got is it's going to have some Mega CD titles. I shall make good effort to say Mega CD and not Sega CD or Genesis, because it's Japan, and also only the US they called it the Genesis. Very odd. Uh, but they showed a bunch of games, and one thing I liked about the presentation, um, and the Japanese presentation is kind of like this. Um, they like doing these live streams uh, with a bunch of people, like a panel, and it's just like they just chat about things, they get a little bit of time to, you know, say their thoughts, uh, and then they basically go through a lot of points in two hours, um, compared to really quick fire in half an hour, but I, I find it's actually kind of nice and intimate. It does mean, of, of course, like, you know, if it's not translated like this one is, um, you kind of have to... Oh boy, as well, I just realized the green stars on these. Uh, no, don't tell me how to glide, just... Time to fly, go for it. Um, oh, these are going to be fun. I'm also not going to finish the race, am I? I'm just going to casually pick up a star as I go along. I wasn't even paying attention before, <laughs> I've just gone for it, so. Uh, but yeah, no, this um, this is like that, the Indie Live Expo as well, if you, um, if you ever watch that. Um, it's long, it's two four-hour days. Uh, but they, like, they rapid-fire some stuff. They have, like, uh, uh, three Japanese, um, guests, oh, there it is, uh, talk about it, and then, uh, the English presentation, they have two people, um, I assume they're native Japanese, but they know English, and they speak English pretty, pretty well, um, basically commentating over it, so they try to listen out for it, and then try and read out what they're saying live, and then they very occasionally say their own thoughts, but it's just like, it's a, it's such a chaotic, but fun, dense, like, thing. And on top of that, like, you get to see all these titles that you'd probably never see otherwise. They're just, you know, there's a lot of unique things that you get out of these longer conferences, whereas, like, I don't know, the 27-minute stuff, uh, a lot of people are really gonna look over, um, the Callisto Protocol. It just, it just happens in the middle of the, the thing. Um, 
so that's why I like writing these down and kind of just discussing them a little bit. Um, just because I feel like, hey, if I mention them, someone out there might go, ah, oh, that, that game. Or someone out there who, you know, if you're a game, uh, you know, analytics kind of person, you're trying to figure out what the public reaction uh, to stuff. Players are good, but usually they suck. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, I, I missed that. It was a couple of minutes ago. Um, yeah, like, uh, if you're, um... Uh, train of thought, train of thought, where'd it go? Where'd it go? <laughs> um, yeah, if, you, if you're an analyst and you're trying to figure out, like, media reaction to certain games, and then you're relying on the YouTube auto-generated subtitles to go, Ah, someone said, uh, Slip Heed. There you go. I said it. So, Slip Heed is the first of the Sega... Uh, Mega CD games they showed off um, for the new Sega Mini console. These are old games, mind you. Um, it's a shoot 'em up with a fun 3D perspective going on, uh, where they use a full motion video background um, to basically render, you know, whatever. And all the sprites are properly, you know, they grow and shrink based on perspective, and they do some, you know, neat little 3D, uh, you know, kind of effects. It looks very neat. So get on that. Uh, Shining Force CD is apparently one of the most, like, cult classic games on the Sega CD that no one knows exists. It's a tactics-based RPG with, uh, where is the, where's, where's the star? Where's the star? Where's the star? I'm gonna return the map, it's gonna be quicker than going out here. Where's the star? <laughs> Let's go back in. Maybe it's over on the left. That's what I was thinking. This one and the, um, the one later on are going to be absolutely painful trying to find because, uh, I don't know, if I go down the wrong track, you know, I'm not going to see that star. Does it show up here? Do I see it here? No, they don't really show it here. Oh, well, I'm going to take a second step. Uh, but yeah, Shining Force CD, nice. Uh, next one is Sonic CD. Yeah, you know that one already. It's been re-released a bajillion times, but it's nice to have, um, I guess, a, a very, like, vintage native version. Um, the Japanese trailer also had the, the Toot Toot Sonic Warrior song playing, because that was in the Japanese version, so that was that. Uh, next one is Umemi Mystery Mansion. This is a point-and-click game with full-motion video transitions between scenes, kind of like the 11th guest, sorry, the 7th guest. The 11th hour is the sequel, and uh, we shall never speak of, of that game. Um, so let's lean left instead. Uh, this map is really nice looking. It is very nice looking. Alright, so there's the first star. So everything is beyond this first star. Or at least the, the one star I'm looking for is after it. Let's see, I'm looking down, I don't see it. There's a one hole lower. I don't know if it's down the bottom there. Is it over to the left? I don't really see it. I'm gonna take another look if it's at the end here. Oh, it is! There it is! I'm just gonna sail off to space. I'm just gonna go to space. <laughs> there I go! <laughs> Okay, okay. I've seen it now. I've seen it. Uh, you know, you made me Mystery Mansion. It looks neat. It's it's a game that I would totally play. Like, and I was just like, oh, I, this is the first time I've learned about it, so that's cool. Um, the art style actually looks really nice. Like, the, the, the creepiness of the Sega CD full motion video makes it look the one place without capitalism space. That's the one. I've never played a Command & Conquer, but... I do, I do really need to, so. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd, I'd definitely play that. Um, last one, I don't know if this was a, this is a Sega CD game still, uh, Mega CD. Uh, Pop Full Mail, it's a Falcom, uh, action side-scroller game, actually. It involves these, uh, you get to wield different weapons, fight different enemies. It might be an RPG aspect to it, because it's a Falcon game, but it looks neat. It's actually got a nice, clean, um, anime-style full-motion video at the beginning as well, like, uh, focusing hard on the sprites. Um, so they're definitely, like, they're, those were the only five Mega CD games they wanted to show off, but it looks fairly neat, so good on them.
And then they also showed five other just Mega Drive games that weren't on the last Mega Drive, and now they're on this one. Um, the first one is Virtua Racing, which is kind of neat because uh, the Virtua Racing cartridge on the Mega Drive slash Genesis, um, they put a little chip in the cartridge to make it run um, faster than, you know, well, to be more powerful than the typical Genesis Mega Drive cartridge usually is. Um, similar to the Super FX chip on um, uh, on the SNES. Um, this kind of was extending it to basically pull off the 3D visuals required for virtual racing. Um, and in doing so, it surprisingly is a more powerful game than many Super FX games. Um, like legit, it's, it's fairly impressive for the system. It does not look as good as the Saturn game though. Um, it supports two-player split-screen, if you've never played the Genesis slash Mega Drive version of it. Um, but unfortunately, it's not the 32X version. Some people were talking, I saw in the chat, people were spamming 32X at that point. It's not the 32X version, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, they both came out in the same year as well, but... You know what, like, I'll, I'll accept it, you know, it's cool. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, there's so many compromises, but also it's just like, you know, what? manage to actually run on the cartridge and what is running on the system itself it's like that's really impressive i guess the idea of also just you know figuring out how to get the game to emulate nicely because the mini is obviously emulating it and you know i guess the snes mini they did go for star fox but um but it's it's good it's good that they didn't just go for the very easy picks and that being said, they went for Bonanza Brothers next. Bonanza Brothers is a bit of an older Mega Drive game. Um, it's a two-player co-op, but you can play as one player. Uh, rob the bank kind of game. You just run through buildings, shoot up, uh, you know, just kind of cops, and it's kind of cutesy. Kind of cutesy outside. It's not like the crazy cutesiest, but, you know. It's just like, pew, 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 bam, bam, like that. Um, maybe it's not bank robbing as well. Um, this one's gonna be one where, man, I wish this levels weren't as uh, non-linear. I heard, heard of uh, Black or Dark Mage platform release in 2018. It was released for the NES. Ah, oh, dude, releasing like old games for newer, sorry, releasing new games for older platforms is like such an interesting one. I think, I don't know if I've heard of those games in particular, but I, I do remember, um, it probably was 2018. Like, they released a, a Dreamcast version of Volgar the Viking, and it was like a straight port of the game, but for 20-year-old hardware, which is very, very amazing. I love people who, um, yeah, like these, these homebrew titles for these older systems. Okay, I heard the star around there, and then I kept sailing over here thinking that it would be over there, and I hope I wasn't just hearing the comet metal there. I think it was the star I was hearing. Oh, I might as well pick it up, just so I know. Nope, I was totally hearing the... the metal. Well, in that case, let's just keep going, because... If I haven't seen one of the stars, and either... Well, either the other one's on the other main star, or it's up there. I, in fact, I can see it right now. It's up there. Uh, they made a video about the compromises and really intelligent optimizations I had to do to fit on the NES cartridge, and then we know the metal was not disguised as up. True, true. Um, the NES is really weird as well, because, um, like, everyone extends the cartridge with a custom memory controller. Like, everyone does it. Well, at least it's not like it's death when I fall down, but... Yeah, uh, next game in the list, Shining in the Darkness. They, they did Shining for CD, this is the first Shining game. Um, it's a much more traditional dungeon crawler kind of RPG at the time. Uh, but the art style is really neat, it's nice and vibrant, and uh, when you come across an enemy they wiggle about on the screen, so it's not just, you know, burning in your screen, so that's nice. Uh, Thunder Force 4, it's a shoot 'em up uh, side-scrolling is shoot-em-up. There's a lot of nice little fun effects going on. Um, what's kind of weird is, uh, oh, it, it's got really nice music from the trailer. I, it kind of reminds me of a uh, Galaxy Force or Stellar Assaults music, you know? Although those are 3DS space shooters, but I love the, you know, the Mega Drive era music involving these shoot-em-ups. They're just so good. So, uh, still on target after 40 stars in two hours. Oh, nice. Nice. 
Get me out of here, he says. Let's pick up some star bits, because why not? Also, 150, yeah, jeez. Also, it's not too bad if I go a little over two hours, but... Oh, that's kind of good to know that, like, I can do 40 stars. Um, because, yeah, I was not expecting to... Really try and get the stars this quickly. I guess it's because these are all levels you've seen already. And I'm just kind of narrating through them. Uh, that's why I was like, yeah, I should also have my list of E3 notes. Um, that means I've got a, you know, still three minutes per star, slightly less. Yeah, like, you gotta, you gotta get the stars quick, and then you gotta get through the menus to get to the next star. I guess you, you'll never have Blubber interrupting on you. You get a star, you immediately go to the next one. I feel like I've got to do the swimming part, like, twice. Like, for the next green star. Darn, if only there wasn't the chimps challenge on this one. Uh, but yeah. Next one, Magical Taruto-kun. There's two rules in there. Uh, this is a manga series adaptation into a side-scroller. It kind of reminds me of Kirby, and then I looked up the release dates, and this game came out three days before Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy, uh, which is very interesting. It's bright and colorful, your, um, the platforming seems easy, but it's nice and cute, and you hit enemies with various, uh, various tools. I'm hearing it to my right. Where is it? <laughs> Um, also, this game is by, or oh, Magical Tuburuto-kun, it is by, uh, none other than Game Freak, you may know, for creating Pokemon four years later. What a, what a small world. Oh! Oh boy, this is gonna be the gutsiest drop. Let's do it. Okay, at least you can spin. Or recuperating your mom's place, you did play a lot of Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, Super Mario Odyssey is such a great game. So good fun. I gotta replay it. I have I have really been wanting to replay it. Um, I, d I played it before they did the time trial. Um, like the Luigi's Balloon trial. Uh, just free update. And all I know about it is a uh, donkey doing some real crazy stuff. So who knows, maybe they'll get me really back into it. Um, now the last game they showed off, they had this, this one was really interesting. Um, so they showed off 10 games, and then they were like, bring down the, the prompt a little more. There's an 11th slot, and they mentioned Fantasy Zone. Now, Fantasy Zone, uh, Super Fantasy Zone appeared on the uh, original Mega Drive Mini. The original one. Um, uh, which is the, the only Mega Drive version of Fantasy Zone. What they did, they had an unreleased Genesis slash Mega Drive port of... The original Fantasy Zone. They finished it up, or maybe it's brand new. Like, they made it from scratch, and they are now releasing it on this little Mega Drive Mini. And I kind of like this idea of maybe, you know, these mini consoles, maybe, you know, we should... Well, sorry, it, it would be such a sweet deal if more of these miniature consoles could spoil us with special versions of games. I really like the idea of the, the NES and SNES Online, how they sometimes do these like ROM hack versions of games where they start off at different points in time or the, a little bit ultra hard in some ways. They don't go quite crazy far enough. Like not like the the Sonic 3D um, uh, like Directors Cut that um, John Burton did a few years back. Um, no, just, just stuff like that where it's like, oh, balancing it out, making mechanics smoother. Um, that'd be kind of nutty if uh, they could actually release that. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but... Yeah, this is a, a remake of the original Fantasy Zone and not the sequel. Or, or a couple of sequels later down the line, Super Fantasy Zone. But it's a Mega Drive version. That's really cool. Um, and Fantasy Zone is a kind of neat game as well. Uh, it's like a little... Uh, it's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, but you get to move back and forth, like, actually scrolling the screen left and right. Uh, like a Kung Pao version of the Tiger and the Crane Fist movie. Um... I'm gonna say yes. I wish I knew the reference. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, uh, la lastly, they also, um, uh, have little decoration kits. So you get a little, you know, the console itself, the, the Mega Drive Mini, it's just a Mega Drive, like, shape, little miniature one. I cannot go down. Um, 
I, I know of Kung Pao, but I just don't know. I've never seen it, so I just I don't know any hard references in it, unfortunately. Add that to my list of films that I've yet to see. So I was hearing the sparkly, and I don't know if it was that one or if it's another one above me. Can I pan the camera up far enough, or...? Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, they, they're also like, oh, we're also releasing these little, uh... Tiger and Crane Fist was too much- Oh, wait, 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 yeah, 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 because they use, um... Is it, are they using stock footage, or is it like... Yeah. Something like that. There you go, that's the... Oops, oops. Um... Yeah. But the- so, okay, so the, the Mega Drive Mini, you can buy little plastic, uh, things to basically clip on the Mega CD onto your- your Mega Drive Mini too. Um, it's only plastic, it doesn't do anything, but, uh, it's neat. An 80s martial arts flick. Alright. Hmm. And then, uh, the last thing they mentioned was that you can get a cushion shape like a Mega Drive controller. Um. But yeah, the, the presentation, it was two hours. Well, it was like an hour and a half. Um, it was kind of long, but it's also like, well, one, you can kind of skip through it a bit unless you want the reactions. Um, because there wasn't really, there was one trailer at the beginning, uh, which was kind of neat. It was like a wrestling match, and the guy had a helmet shaped like a Mega Drive, and then another guy came in, uh, and it was like the CD and pose to kind of, you know, put the two together. Very funny movie. Green Star 1. What a great star name right there. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the Mega Drive Mini 2, I hope it comes over here. Only one of those games actually has, like, has not been released in the West. The other nine, and the, oh, I guess the, the, uh, Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star? Fantasy Zone. Fantasy Star is a different <laughs> Sega franchise. Um, this is gonna be good fun trying to figure out where the Green Star is. I think there's one that is the, <laughs> that, that is a... That was a catch and a half. Down he goes. Um, but yeah, no, I, I hope it comes over here. I don't know what happened to the other, like, I guess because this is the second one. Where's the first one? This probably exists. Um, also, I guess they've given themselves the uh, leeway to do the 32X separately again. I don't know if there's as many 32X games, but I like the idea of putting Mega CD games on. That's cool. Alright, so there's nothing up there. Cool. I, like, yeah, that's the, that's a little hidden star, but there's something down here. Uh, very no. I did it twice. I did it twice. Uh, but yeah, no. Neat presentation. Would give it a mild, uh, watch. Um, now there was, uh, another presentation by, um, uh, Oh, who was it? They, um, they developed, uh, oh my gosh, I'm absolutely blanking out. If you go on Ether Recap, it's the people who are just about the Sega, um, one. And, uh, the problem that I didn't write anything down is because, one, it's a, it's another Japan presentation, it's a live stream, they're talking about stuff. It's also not very easy. Oh, they made Tenchu Stealth Assassins, that was him. Uh, so if you know the devs, it starts with A. I think I'm hearing both the start and, uh, I'm gonna go left. I'm gonna see if there's something to my left. I feel like I'm hearing that star. Okay, cool. Nope, I didn't. I didn't see it. I didn't really see it. You're a newbie. Yes. Uh, but the problem with their presentation is I couldn't rely on the auto-generated subtitles because they had a hard subtitle exclusively to point out at one point that they put wrong text on screen and they had to fix it. Because YouTube doesn't let you auto-generate subtitles when someone has put in a subtitle track, I have no way of translating this in live real time. Maybe there's a better way to do it, but... Uh, yeah, no, I have no idea what they're saying. Maybe one Kenobi. Um, yeah, and uh... Okay, I, I hear a saw, I hear a saw. Alright, must be further up. Bonk, 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 bonk. 
Oh, 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 pain. Pain and suffering right there. Uh, so unfortunately, they, they're gonna miss on me. I don't know what's going on with them. Uh, but I did watch the Limited Run Games uh, presentation. Limited Run is most notorious for being absolute mad lads and releasing games on consoles that should be dead, but they're not. Uh, or, at the very least, older titles that you're like, oh, they exist. So sure, they, uh, they actually did the fancy thing. Devolver really set the stage with, you know, having a bit of a comedy skit between the between the segments, and maybe it's kind of inspired by some of the Nintendo Directs. You remember the Muppet one? That was a classic. My puppet body is ready. That's the that's a classic. So, uh, so they got Mega sixty four to do a nice little skit where they basically played a riff on uh, various full motion video titles. Uh, it's kind of started off feeling like Corpse Killer, and then they did a Mad Dog McCree kind of like you know shootout section, and then they did a Night Trap skit where. Uh, they knocked a the guy off and did the bed trap. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it was good fun. It was good fun between the bits. Uh, but there was a lot of, a lot of announcements they showed in the middle. So they start off with River City Girls 2. This has one of the smoothest looking art styles, like pixel art styles, I've seen in a long time. The animation is really fluid. It's a nice little beat-em-up. I don't really know too much about the gameplay itself. They show off a bit, but... Nice and combat-heavy, like, juggling. Your enemies a ton, so looks kind of neat. Two player co-op, cool, for sure. Uh, there's another game called Undermine. It's a roguelike uh, dungeon crawler. I'm it, like a Zelda-like, an original Zelda-like dungeon crawler. Um, I I feel like you could describe a lot of games like that, but uh, this one looks like one of the cleaner ones. Like it, it looks pretty flush in how it's working, so. I'll give it a pass, but I don't know much about it. Um, then they showed off uh, Blade Runner Enhanced Edition. There was a Blade Runner game. I don't know who made the Blade Runner game uh, originally, but this is an enhanced version that's running on... Uh, well, I, I guess it's just a Unity port or something. I'm not too sure who was actually making it, but yeah, it's a nice enhanced version of an old point-and-click adventure game. Or not quite point-and-click. It's a little more fancy than that. It's got nice 3D... Um, 3D, uh, characters on pre-rendered backgrounds. It's got, uh, these really lovely looking full motion video cutscenes as well between things that they showed off a ton. Uh, they let you, well, they showed off the whole thing is still in 4x3, so that looks neat. Um, some of it looks a little weird. It sometimes looks like some of the environments were texture filtered and then, um, and then it's like, oh, but some of the characters are pixely. So I don't know, maybe it doesn't quite look the absolute greatest at a higher resolution, but... Oh, that's a, that's a real far, far shot there. Uh, let's see how I can do this. Uh, but yeah, no, it looks neat. Uh, then they shot off Power Slave uh, Exumed. This is the, um, the Night Dive. Uh, Samuel Villarreal, wonderful job, uh, version of the, uh, this wonderful game by Lobotomy for the Sega Saturn and PlayStation. And, uh, and not the, not the DOS version that also exists at the same time. Um, it already exists, it's already been out for, uh, half a year by now, I think. Uh, but I assume if there's an announcement that's already out, it's probably because they're doing a Switch physical release. Every single one of these games that they announced um, is getting a physical Switch release as well as also other kinds of releases, except for one. One of them's not getting a Switch release. Uh, one's called, the next game's called Spider Spidersaws. Uh, it looks like a Contra style game. A little slow looking from the looks. I'm not too sure how exciting it'll be, but sure. Um, man, there's that, so. Bowser's Lava Lair, two more stars, and then World 2's done, and then we'll see. Keep going. Jeez, I've already done an hour 38. That's the problem with these E3 ones. I just keep ranting, and eventually I'm done. Uh, okay, let, let's go a bit quick through this one. Uh, so, Lunark, it's a Prince of Persia slash flashback style pixel art indie game. Sure. Shadowrun Trilogy. You probably know these games if you've been on Steam. They're coming onto the Switch physically now. That's a nice trilogy, so cool. Uh, now this one, this one, 
Go Go Coco Polo Harmonious Forest Revenge. The name's a bit of a mouthful, but this game is a DSi title that is, and they advertise in the trailer, the last, poss sorry, possibly the last 3DS physical release. That is correct. They are re-releasing this game for the 3DS. As well as also they had a 3DS downloadable title that they're also uh, releasing as well. It's, it's another, they're releasing two 3DS games. I'm absolutely amazed that, like, they're doing it. It's very admirable. I like it. So good on them. Very good on them. Uh, the game itself is like, um, I'm gonna say it's like, uh, strategic Pac-Man. Um, you're effectively running through that maze and you're luring enemies into traps or other enemies or something like that. Um, there's some exclusive levels, a lot of exclusive levels on the, uh, the retail version that they're going for. Uh, I'm not too sure if you could, you probably can't download on the eShop because they're freezing that this month. Uh, new 3DS broke, sold your 3DS Yabo. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe you can run it on Citra. Buy a retail version, dump it, and then run on Citra. I see that green star. I'm curious where the other one is though, because this looks like number two. Oh, that was such a jump. Look at that spot. Look at what is going on here. Monster of four years, so amazing. Monster of four, four years, so nice on the system. It's it's such a nice looking game, and it controls so nicely with the extra C stick. Although I wasn't the biggest fan of the new 3DS C stick, it feels a little too stubby, and I sometimes like struggle to really feel precise with it. But we got bra momented. Is the bra me jumping off like that? Cause yeah. I tell you, these stars, like, they get real cheeky. Oh, 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 that's okay. They get real cheeky, these stars. Oh, don't, 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 don't. Okay, I'm stat- no, I'm... Down I go, I'm out, I'm out, I'm down for the count. Uh... So, uh, next one on the list is Skell Attack. Uh, this is a Konami, uh, side-scroller game. For some odd reason, you can watch this back, the trailer that, for some odd reason, they provided is in, like, 240p. It's got video compression artifacts all over the place. I don't know why. It's so dirty looking. I don't think it's the art style. I think they just legitimately sent a low-resolution video. Uh, for the show, so good job, Konami. Nice job. Um, the game looks okay. I don't have much to say about it though. Um, for sure. Uh, Doom 64. This literally was a pre-order bonus for uh, Doom Eternal. Um, so if you pre-ordered Doom Eternal, then you got this. Was it pre-order bonus? Really at the same time. Oh, oh my gosh! I'm struggling for that one. Um. They're gonna give me the bronze star in a moment and be like, oh nah, you need this. Maybe I should actually grab that. This thing. Might need it. It's because you're not farming star bits, so you just casually like lose them all trying to get the very cheeky stars going on here. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, no, Doom 64, it's Doom 64. I've even played this remastered version. At least Power Slave, I haven't played the, the remaster, but Doom 64, nah. It, it's a great game. It's worth the seven and a half bucks to buy it digitally. Buying it physically is purely, purely a collector's thing, but it's neat. It's neat that, like, Limited Run is getting a lot of attention. Like, you're not just getting these, you know, small indie titles that, you know, couldn't have gotten physical releases otherwise, but... Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! What is going on here? Jump on the rock? I'm... The problem is, is that I'm sliding off the rock, except I stood on the rock the first time, so I know I'm doing something wrong. At least that one-up keeps coming back? So, what's that? Uh, next game. Bill and Ted's Excellent Retro Collection, featuring the NES game and the Game Boy game that they probably released at the time. Um, someone asked for this, so sure. 
The NES game looks like it's got an NTSC filter over it, so it looks nice and authentic. The Game Boy game looks like they emulated it directly and it doesn't look like... Look. <laughs> I mean, it's a Game Boy game, you can't, you know... You can't make it crazy detailed, there's only so much detail in a Game Boy game anyways. Um, but it, lo it looks a little flat. Okay. We're going, we're going on the side here. Yeah, it's a lot easier if you just line up like that, isn't it? Yeah. Now this one, this one's exciting. A game called Rendering Ranger. Apparently it is one of the rarest Super Famicom games. They are re-releasing it. They're, you know, doing the whole SNES emulator kind of version. Alright, sure. And they are also re- like, releasing it on SNES cartridges. Oh, they really want me to have a second player. So that's really neat that this ultra-rare game they are effectively printing new cartridges of it in 2022. Amazing stuff. And also, I guess it's releasing outside Japan, so sure. Um, Shantae, the original Shantae game. I think it's already been a downloadable title, the original Shantae. Um, the one with the Game Boy Color mode and the Game Boy Advance mode. Um, so I guess it's just a physical version of that. Uh, a Boy in His Blob. Um, I don't know much about this game. Also, it's another NES Game Boy combo. So, sure, okay. Uh, Anniversary Collection Arcade Classics. You would not know that Konami is basically the creator of all these games. And you would also not know that out of the six games, I'm going to read them out, we got Nemesis, Vulcan Venture, Haunted Castle, Thunder Cross, Life Force, Typhoon, Twin B, and Scramble. Six of those are shoot 'em ups. Um, so if you're not a big fan of shoot 'em ups, maybe it's not quite your cup of tea. But it looks like it's getting the um, the Castlevania um, like uh, classic collection. The they did the advanced collection thing where they um, they put like little bonus features and little art and and all this stuff to really make it a bit of a special version. It looks like they're doing the exact same thing on this one. So nice of them to do that. Uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Wars. Some people really, really like this game and I don't know anything about it because I've not played it, but... It's one, coming to Switch, and two, I guess it's limited run, so it's getting a physical release. I really like, um, by the way, that it's... Like, it's a PS2 style looking game, but they've... Just specifically just kept it the same, you know, looks. Like, yeah, it's running at a Switch resolution and that's it. That's all it is. They never did anything fancy, and I wholeheartedly accept that. I really do think that PS2 games, a lot of them, will probably look alright without actually needing any graphical adjustments beyond the resolution. And maybe the frame rate, if you really want to pull that off. Um, but I don't think people will mind the 30 on this one. Um, Alright, I hear- Oh no, it's under the matter muncher. Well, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Uh, next one. Uh, unusual shading technique, right? Um, on Nazi Old Republic, it looks pretty normal. I, I don't have anything to really, like, say on it, but... PS2 games did real, like, fancy stuff to make the art kind of shine in the right way, so... Um... Because, yeah, yeah the, the PS2 is a weird console. Well, that's World 2 done. And, uh, I am probably a little bit behind on the... Well, maybe I'm right on track. How about let's get this and then, uh, the galaxy below. The sky whatever galaxy, I forgot the name of it. Sky Garden. I think that's gonna be six stars, but you know what, six stars will be good. Uh, so next one, Garden Story. It's a pixely farming sim kind of game, but it's also like Stardew Valley, where your farming sim has to be interrupted by you going out and slashing people with the sword. It looks nice and cute, the only thing is it briefly reminds me of Forager. And I have had some very rough experiences with Forager, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be hopeful on this one. But uh, yeah, I, I I guess like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out later. It's also already out, so who knows? Someone's probably written about it. Um, there you go. Up goes the Yoshi. Let's see if you can listen out for a star. I don't think there is a star up here. Oh no, there is a star. Oh. 
I assume this is just a Yoshi flutter and backflip kind of a deal. So, oh! Oh! No! Oh! That's pain. Okay. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe it, so. Uh, next up, Don Don Patchy. Sorry, Dodon Patchy Resurrection. It's uh, a shoot 'em up. It's very spammy looking. It's a lot, a lot of, a lot of shots you're making. So okay, but it's on the Switch. Um, this is this is genre tag. That's a specific tag. Um, was it Manic Shooter? That's the name of like the specific like kind of shoot 'em up this is. There's just like so much going on. Um, I think it's an arcade game, and it's just like only. Oh, it might it might have been localized like for Android. But it's only now, like, getting, like, a, you know, another console release. There we go. Uh, but it looks okay. Um, plumbers don't wear- Oh, the other thing with the Doom 64 trailer, they showed a release date, March 20, 2020. They, they used the exact same trailer they used way back when, um, just to show the game. So, you have to kind of infer that, yeah, it's getting a physical release, but you might miss that. Um... First, yes. Oh, um, probably went on to collect the main star by that point. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, next one. Oh boy, plumbers don't wear ties. They, mad lads, did it. They took the meme. They thought people would want to play plumbers don't wear ties, even though, no, I think the angry video game nerd basically showed the entirety of the game that there was no reason to play it by yourself. That being said, I appreciate that adding in deleted scenes and uh, interviews. Interviews are always great for re-releasing these games. I think every video game should have developer commentary or interviews if they're re-releasing it. I don't like the idea of a re-release coming out and the game is just, it's the exact same game and it's like, oh, like, you know, give me some insight. What did it take to make the game? Because there's a lot of games that come out and they just immediately chuck you in with the history of it. So, good on them for that, bad on them for thinking that plumbers don't wear ties need to remaster. Um, they've also upscaled, uh, the visuals, um, and it looks horrendous. There's not much detail there, so, oh. Um, and yeah, they, they even make fun of the fact that, like, there's probably no gameplay. Because there isn't. It's a, it's a slideshow. It's probably one of the most least... It's probably one of the least games out there. It's, it's just amazing, so... Maybe you never heard of Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. There is that angry video game nerd video. Um, that is probably going to be easy to get if I can get the balloon... The balloon? Yeah, I'll get that. Hover it across. And then go up from here. There we go. Nice. Uh, next one. Uh... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. It's like a modern indie beat-em-up. Uh, but it's crazy because it's like, oh, that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's licensed out and it looks pretty alright. It looks really neat. So good on them for that. Um, uh, they also said every physical copy of the game will have a Pizza Hut personal pan pizza and collector's edition versions of the game will have a little, like, plastic figurine and, like, an actual box of plastic figurine comes in. Like, not like the modern kind, but like, the, like, the plastic. It's not shrink wrap, but you know what I mean. It's like that kind of plastic casing. Really nice stuff, so good on them for that. Um, it's amazing that, I guess, licensed games, you know, can really thrive by having a solid developer do a tie-in like that. And it's kind of weird that it doesn't happen too much. Um, I think that kind of cheaped out. They went for like the mobile dev scene and now it's like, oh, okay. Remember when WayForward made a Thor video game? I don't know why I ducked on the south, but sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, next one, Blossom Tales 2, the Minotaur Prince. It's a pixel looking, uh, dodge rolling, uh, I guess Zelda 1 style room based combat game. They only showed bosses. They didn't show any uh, actual like levels. If there are any levels. So. Oh, I think I fear the star is like somewhere along this, along this slide. 
So this is gonna be this is gonna be fun to get. Um, next one, Enclave HD. This is a PS2 era uh, medieval fantasy slashy sword game. Uh, you can be different classes with different kinds of um, different kinds of weapons. Uh, there's a lot of neat little environments. It looks so PS2, but yet again, you know, it's PS2 at a HD resolution, and that's it. And I absolutely love that because it means that whatever the original game looked, I'm going off to the space. I'm really going off to the space. Wow. Uh, it means whatever the original game looked like, this game is exactly that. And I. That's, that's great. So. Next game American Hero. This is a full motion video game I do not know of, but it looks kind of silly. Um. They upscaled it. Again, it doesn't look tremendously great. Um, that's all I can say, really. Uh, Prize Fighter Heavyweight Edition. Uh, this is, um, I think, another full motion video game at the time. Uh, they didn't even get into gameplay. They just showed this is like a boxing game. A uh, bunch of people in the crowd. Uh, this time, though, it does look like they took footage from the VHS. So it's much nicer quality than the... Uh, you know, then the aforementioned game there. Um, so there's that. Uh, Bats. Bloodsucker Anti-Terrorist Squad. They briefly showed it off. It's a side-scroller with goopy, uh, gory kills. They said it's tremendously gory in the, you know, people who supposedly reviewed the game. Um, but I, I don't know. I didn't see that much of it. Um, they mentioned Night Trap and, like, they were like, oh, also... I saw the green star too late. I was looking at Night Trap. Um, yeah, they already did a, a 25th anniversary version of Night Trap in 2017. It's now 2020, so they're like, oh, it's a 30th anniversary thing. But they didn't say what they actually did. They're just kind of hinting that there's something. Okay. Um, we got the game D. D is on Steam. You can buy the game on Steam already. They're like, just the old DOS game. Um, it's a full motion video. Um horror kind of game, although the full motion video is not live action full motion video, it's just they CG rendered stuff uh, with real people, so okay. Um, this version looks like they've kind of horrendously upscaled everything yet again, ugh, but you know what, if, it, if it's on the Switch, sure, you know, I'll accept, I'll accept versions of games being on the Switch. Um, they also stuck the 3DO logo on the trailer, which I thought was kind of interesting. Hey, where's the star? Where's the star? It's after this one, isn't it? I gotta, like, not look over. There it is. Oh, that's a, that's a tricky one. There you go. Uh, next one. Uh, Esp Goluda 2. This is the exact same trailer as the other game. What was that? Uh... It was the exact same trailer as... Uh, oh boy, where's it gone? Where did it go? Where did it go? I've, I've written it down. Yep, nope. I have no idea what the other game was. Maybe my, maybe I'm gone, you know. Uh, not the butterfly flight. What's the one? Mandela effect. I was just like, oh, I thought I wrote down like another game existing. Um, oh, Dodon Patchy Resurrection. It's the exact same trailer as that. It's probably by the exact same devs. They literally touted the exact same arcade features. I assume it's just a different arcade uh, manic shooter that they ported. So that's okay. One thing it does get, uh, they, they have a feature in the game to rotate the screen, which is going to be nice when you play it uh, portably on the Switch because you get the nice vertical aspect ratio on the Switch. So that's cool. Uh, next one, Glover. Um, it's already been out. Uh, I remember people saying, oh boy, they do some shady stuff by effectively re-releasing a game and therefore preventing you from, like, well, effectively allowing them to copyright strike the heck out of the game, which is, or take down of ROMs, stuff like that. Uh, it's a really nice looking galaxy, this this one as well. Unless you're talking about the tree one, in which case that one's also nice. Three lives for your game over this taxi? Nah, because I'm, I'm probably going to be good on this one. There we go. There's the first star, so... Uh, 
Other than that, yeah, it's Glover. It's the same. It, it's a horrendous PC port in the sense of it runs exactly the same as the original, except you can stretch the resolution. It, I think it's partially based on the N64 version, but some people also saying there's like a PC version, so okay. Uh, Tetris Effect Connected. It's a very pretty Tetris game, and it has the co-op massive board mode, so that's cool. Uh, Frogon, this is a polygonal platformer game. It looks very cutesy, but a little stiff looking, but it looks okay. It might be a collectathon because they have a big counter in the top left telling you how many coins on that level you've collected, so might be alright. Uh, two more Death Wish Enforcers. It's a retro beat em up. Um, another Contra style one, but they, uh, they've got various guns, or each character has a different weapon. Um, they, they're on bikes in one bit, they literally fight a massive demon head at one point, uh, and lots of dudes at other points. It looks pretty manic, so I actually think it's pretty okay. Um, and then the last one, Doom Eternal. Uh, did it not get a physical release? I thought it did. Okay, maybe it's a cartridge physical release, so. But again, it's nice to have it on cartridge. Um, no word on whether the DLC is part of it, although the DLC is on the Switch version, which is very amazing that they did that, but overall, nice conference. The Mega 64 bits were nice, good fun. Um, I really liked just the variety in games there, stuff you can get now, stuff that is going to come out late. Oh boy. Do I have... I, I should go down and get more clouds, shouldn't I? Because I think you could probably do this without... Yeah, you can do that without burning all your clouds, and now you gotta go. There you go. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a that was a really nice um, showcase, the the limited games one. I'd definitely give it a watch. It's got a lot of exciting stuff. You might find that hey, that one 3DS game, the uh, um, Go Go Coco Polo Harmonious Forest Revenge. I might pick that up, because it's like, oh, how neat. One last 3DS game to go out with a bang. Um, but yeah, nah, ultimately neat stuff. Uh, there's a lot of conference that I have still yet to watch. Um, I'm, my mouth is so sore, so <laughs> I will call this one the last star. One more star. Um, and then I shall sleep. Sleep well tonight. Uh, but yeah, I've, I'll, I'll watch more of the E3 stuff. Will I, well, yeah, quotes E3. Will I comment on every single thing? Maybe, but I thought that was a nice kind of taste into into all of it. Just kind of going, okay, well, like, you know, here's a, a big conference. Here's a, um, uh, a specialized conference. Here's a, you know, a, a more live streaming conference. And then here's a, a smaller studio. Uh, I did watch the Devolver stream live uh, that happened during the week. Um, I think maybe, will I mention Skate Story in full? Maybe. Um, but, uh, at least for now, all I can say is, yeah, that was pretty exciting. Um, although they didn't do any kind of, like, uh, how many stars are left in the world. Uh, there's, oh, there's probably more left in the world, because this is only the second of the seven galaxies in the world. Um, but, like, we're already at 161. This is going to be 162. So that means I got 41 in the, in the stream. I think if I get 41 in this stream and 41 in the next stream... Um, then what does that leave? That leaves 37 plus, uh, well, you'll see. But I think that'll probably pace it quite nicely. Because it's not gonna, like, you know, go too overtime. I'm not saying you can't go overtime, but... Uh, let's, let's go high up. I wonder if the... If the green star's at the end there. I don't hear it here, so let's continue on. Did I burn the cloud? Last two stars. Uh, oh, in this world, there's only one. Sorry, by world, I thought you meant like the... the um, you know, like the, the seven galaxy world. I don't know why I put that. Ride the wind. Stuff your wind. Okay, you can ride it. Second last star is the hardest star after that point. Oh, I was looking at the chat. <laughs> uh, the same, you only have one life and no checkpoints. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Spoilers on that one, I'm keeping it a secret. Keeping that one a secret. 
But yeah, no, that... Uh, when we get to that, that's gonna be good fun. That's gonna be good fun. Sometimes I'm tempted to do, like, a midstream uh, one in the, the middle of the week. Like, a, like just something small. As well as for a 12-year-old game. I know, I know. A 12-year-old game that hasn't been ported to the Switch yet. Some people might just not know. Listen, if I'm playing on an emulator right now, I think I've got no excuse, though. Okay, where is it? Super Mario Galaxy 1 is older than Super Mario 64 was when Super Mario Galaxy 1 came out. Oh, I stream in the middle of the stream? I could do that. Um, I, I, I was just thinking like, well, okay, if I get to that point, and it's like, I struggle so hard on that final level, um, I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine doing like a, you know, a stream in the middle of the week just to get that out of the way without necessarily like, taking up the beginning of another stream. What is that placement? What is that placement? That's a crazy star placement right there, so... Yeah, uh... Will I watch... yeah. I'll watch some more E3s. But, ultimately, I'm... Decently hopeful. There's a lot of neat stuff. Not necessarily stuff I'll buy in the next year, but neat stuff that I think is gonna be interesting to just at least pay attention to. And I think that's probably the best mindset to have with all these E3 things. Is to find some fancy find something that you're really interested in and go, ah, okay, I'll pay attention to that. I'll follow it. I'll watch when it comes out. Not necessarily buy it when it comes out. I'll go and rush out and pre-order, you know, games right off the bat based on the one trailer. Um, even if the trailer is really nice. But at least kind of going, oh, you know, like, these people want you to be interested in a game for a while before, you know, before it comes out or if it's already out, then cool. Um, and this is a great time because everyone's kind of looking at all of these. So 41 stars in 2 hours, 5 minutes, he pretty much kept it 3 minutes per start, considering there was some downtime at the beginning of the stream. So I get, yeah, 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 I'm pretty glad that somehow 3 minutes per star ended up being quite accurate, so... Uh, but that's nice. Yeah. So, uh, just to recap. Yes. Uh, whole first two worlds are done. And two, two galaxies in world 3. Uh, in fact, we've got some of the shorter ones coming up, so that's nice. Uh, but still, a bunch of worlds coming up. We'll give it two more streams. We'll see how it goes. So, other than that, thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this stream, you can just keep enjoying it. You can follow if you want, if you're already followed, but that's okay. I don't mind. I'm not hitting any Twitch limits or anything, so that's all good. Um, and yeah, the VOD will be on YouTube, so if you missed any bits, sure, that's, that's cool. Uh, but... Oh my gosh, my brain is fluff right now, my mouth is so dry because I've just been rambling. Usually I... <laughs> usually I feel like I've got like more... Uh, like downtime in the things I say, but off oh, the E3? The E3 is where I go. Um, Pro Jared didn't do anything for this E3, at least not yet. He hasn't said anything, so... I really liked his takes. I missed him, so... Uh, but, hey, I'll fill the shoes, I'll keep rambling about stuff. Will I give people A pluses? I don't know. Anyways, thank you all so very much. Don't talk as much as I did. Just stay at home, rest up, eat your greens, and, uh... What, what's coming up soon? Oh, it's the Queen's birthday today. I forgot to mention. Happy birthday, Queen. Have a good one, everyone. See ya.